here today at Barkley Lock and it's a pretty exciting day. It was one of my first visits to this site where the new uh, bioacoustic fish fence is being installed. So it's called a bath short for bioacoustic fish fence. Um, it relies on creating a sound field which is captured in a bubble curtain um, which can be used to typically guide fish at a hydroelectric station. Here it's been used to act as a more of a deterrent to be able to obviously stop the Asian carp moving upstream. It was off schedule because of all the water we had this year. The equipment that you might be able to hear in the background is digging in the hard substrate below the lock and there they had a hard time reaching that when the water was higher. So what they're doing at the moment is milling the, the base of the river to reduce its height slightly in certain areas. One, to make it level, so then the bubble curtain is nice and level to start off with, but two, to also get the system low enough down so that the barges can go over the top and obviously there's no problem between either the barge or for our system itself. This is where it starts. The Mississippi and Ohio rivers will have natural reproduction every year, lots of fish. Carp are coming into the Tennessee and Cumberland rivers through the locks. We don't have a lot of, or any, reproduction in these systems. It's, migration upstream is the biggest reason we have so many fish in the whole valley. We have agency staff out every summer for the last three summers looking for larval fish, looking for juvenile fish that would be just slightly bigger than larvals, and we're not seeing them. We've, we've done work on the Mississippi River and demonstrated that if there's little fish out there, we, we can catch them. But we've got three years of larval traps uh, deployed on Kentucky and Barkley Lakes. We do larval toes. They're just, you know, filtering the water column at night just to, just to look for fish that would be suspended up there. And we're seeing all the native fish. We had a great spawn of skipjack and threadfin shad this year on, on Kentucky Lake particularly. And we saw all those fish. We just didn't see any carp. If we can keep those fish from coming upstream, then we've got a chance at controlling this. And on the other side of it is we are controlling the fish through commercial harvest. You know, our, our A-CHIP program, an Asian carp harvest incentive program, is, is not even a year old, and a million pounds of carp, 1.2 million pounds of carp, have come out of Barkley and Kentucky Lakes in that program. The Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency provides a 10 cents subsidy for every pound of carp harvested within our program. And those fish have to come out of strategic locations like the Tennessee, uh, Tennessee River and Cumberland Rivers. We know there's carp in the Mississippi River. We can't control them with those dollars. So we're focusing where it matters. Again, we're containing with these barriers and then we're controlling them with commercial harvest. This is a migration problem. And if we can use the BAF system to reduce the migration component of this, I think we, it really will help us control carp levels.